He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall be whole and not in other. We bought nothing in this world, and it is certain that we shall carry nothing out. The Lord gave. And the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
How many love the Lord today? Hallelujah. How many love the Lord today? Glory. Hallelujah. Yes, we ought to praise him, give him glory, glory even in the midst of death. Glory. We ought to praise our God because he is the God of life yes, he is. and the God of all comfort. Amen? Yes. And we thank God, we praise God, we praise God that we are celebrating the life, the work, the legacy, the impact of our dearly departed brother, husband. We praise God for Brother Keith Darrell Jefferson. We praise God for his life, his work, his legacy, and all that he means to his wife, his siblings, his nieces, his nephews, his aunts, his uncles, and to uh, St. John Baptist Church and to our community. We praise God for his life. And we're here to celebrate today. We know this is a time of mixed emotions. It's a time of sadness because of the great loss of our great beloved brother. But it's also a time of joy because we're celebrating his life. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're going to uh, honor him today, praise our God today, starting off with the opening hymn, Amazing Grace uh, by Grands Incorporated. Uh, the violinist is uh, his niece, uh, Lyric Curry. And of course, after that, we will have the Old Testament scripture by Deacon uh, Reginald uh, Reardon. And of course, uh, New Testament scripture, Reverend Alfonso Counts. Uh, prayer by Reverend Dr. Ro Michael Ross eminent pastor of the New Ebenezer Baptist Church, and of course, selection from the Grands Incorporated, and then we will be back. Before they get started, we do honor all of our pastors, Pastor Ross, to uh, Reverend Counts, to Pastor Lewis, and to all other pastors and ministers and officers and members of the St. John Baptist Church, and of course, to this family, uh, the Jefferson family. We, our hearts and our prayers go out to you in this, your hour of bereavement. So let us celebrate at this time as we open our hymn with amazing grace.
our Old Testament reading comes from the book of Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valleys and the shadows of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me before me in the presence of my enemy. You have anointed my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May God add a blessing to his holy word, and may we adhere to that word. Thank you. Amen. For your words of comfort, the New Testament reading will be coming from Revelation 21, 1 through 4. All things made new. All things made new. Our dear brother was made new. And it reads, now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth have passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw a holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Yes. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is yes, with men. Sir. And he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and they shall be his people. Yes, sir. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from yes, their sir. eyes. There shall be no more death, no more, no more sorrow, Thank you. no more crying. Thank you. There shall be no more pain yes, sir. for the former things have passed yes, away. Sir. Yes, sir. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and believing of this word because our dear brother has been made new. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Will you bow your heads with me as we pray for God's comfort upon this family. Everlasting, eternal, a God of life, love, and liberty, and yes, loyalty. We thank you for this, this day you gave us and granted us together in this moment to experience once again what the scripture has informed us of the God of all comfort, who comforted us in our times of sorrow and sadness yes. Yes. and sickness. We ask your God if you would do as the, the scripture has just reminded us of, of those moments when we all look with great anticipation to the day when we don't have to deal with death. Don't have to deal with despair. Yes, Lord. Don't have to deal with disease. Yes, Lord. Mind us to report our minds and our hearts yes. in the direction of where you will provide for us the most wonderful and beautiful and gracious eternity that awaits those who have lived their life in surrender to your will and your way. Those who have given their heart and soul to Jesus as their Christ. That helps us to understand and helps us to get through these moments now. Knowing that he has passed from death unto life. That he too will not have to deal with the trials and tribulations and troubles of life anymore. Those days are behind him now. Yes, Lord. Nothing but beauty awaits him. Yes, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord, Thank you. that we can look forward to that moment yes. when all tears will be wiped away, yes, all pain will be vanquished. Yes, yes. We thank you now, Lord. For this, our brother who has gone on now yes, to receive for him what you have promised to all those who have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. We thank you for his family and yes. we thank you, oh God, for their, their yes. togetherness, their support for one another, yes. to help them grieve and help them to get through the pain that they are now feeling and experiencing. We thank you for the friends who have come to support this family. And we pray, oh God, that you will continue to allow them to minister to them in the days and the weeks and the months to come. Yes, Lord. Walk with them, God, as you have promised to walk with us. Yes, you have told us to cast all our cares upon you yes, Lord. because you truly, truly care for yes, us. Lord. Yes, Lord. And I pray, God, that if there are those who are still holding on to it, to let it go. Yes. Give it to you. Give it to you. Yes, Lord. One who is able to carry not just yours, but all of ours. Yes. Lord, we ask you now to be uh, a strong tower, to be a rock, to be a refuge for these who are grieving right now. We thank you now, Lord, for his life. We thank you for his, the legacy he's left for those who lived among him and experienced his love and, and the joy that they shared together and the memories that will live on for a lifetime. We thank you for this, brother. And we pray, God, that as they reflect on him and remember him, it will be those fun kind of memories that lift their heads and lift their hearts and give them reason to smile, give them reason to have joy all over again, give them reason to live on beyond this day, knowing, oh God, that whatever they thought was, was meaningful and important to them, having him with them, that he's far better with Jesus now than anything that we can offer him today. Yes, Lord. He's like what Jesus said about Lazarus who's resting in the bosom of Abraham. Yes, yes, yes. That's where we all want to be one day. Yes, sir. In the comfort of the symbolism of the burden yes. of, of the bosom of Abraham. Yes. Knowing that all our cares are over, all our troubles yes, are over. Yes. All our pain is gone. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you now, Lord, Thank you. for what you shall do for this family beyond what any one of us can do in the private moments of their deep despair, yes, Lord. when you will lift them above it, yes, Lord. let them know that you'll never leave them nor will you forsake them. Oh, yes, Hold Lord. them in the hollow of your hand. Yes. Thank you. And we'll be careful to give you the praise and the glory in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. The, Lord. the Bible tells us in everything, give thanks. Even in situations like this, we have to give thanks. All who want John to be right now, let's celebrate the life of our cousin, brother. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Because he's worthy, worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. And in the weeks and days and years to come, you know, we can look to our right, we can look to our left, but our true strength is going to come from above. And that's from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I profess him as my Savior, and he is my strength and my redeemer. You are my strength. Strength like no other, strength like no other, reaches to me. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other. Hey! 
Sister Aubrey Lewis, the cousin, uh, Sister Adia uh, Jefferson, the niece, and Brother uh, Herbert Jefferson, Jr., the brother. For those who are uh, on my left, and Brother Quentin Yarborough. For those who are on my left, you can use the podium to my left. On my right, you can use the podium to my right. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Giving honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life, I bring you greetings from Soul Saving Station in Harlem, New York. Um, that song, you know, I was going through, but that song gave me that extra comfort, that extra strength, that extra help to allow me to stand up here and give some words of expression to my best friend. Keith Jefferson. Um, this is difficult, but I have known Keith since I was eight years old. So we have been knowing each other for 58 years. You guys do the math. Um, we grew up together. Uh, we played together. Uh, we did pretty much everything together. We was in junior high school, all the classes together. And then he went to the boarding school, the gunnery. And I went to this boarding school over here in Oakwood, and we just shared that unique experience. Um, a lot of people didn't rec know this, but we just kept sharing that unique experience of our um, private school, boarding school experience. And only him and I uh, was able to really understand that particular area. Um, I've been with Keith in good situations, when um, I remember when he was first uh, introduced me to Denise, his, his, his wife, he asked me later on, what do you think, Aunt? And I said, uh, oh, by the way, Keith was the first one to nickname me, nickname me Aunt, short for Anthony. So he would ask me, what do you think about Denise? And I said, well, Keith, you're marrying her, but, uh, you know, but he's always looking for my approval. So I said, She's good to go, you know, she, she's, you know. And so he was, he was fine with that. And, and I say this because, um, again, I was with Keith in good situations, bad situations, and everything in between. Anytime that there was a, 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 a situation, he would call me and I would be there. Anytime that there was a business deal or any other type of deal, he's calling me up saying, okay, Aunt, what do you think? And I'll tell him what I thought, and then I would say, have you spoke to Kenny? He said, well, no, not yet. You know, I'm gonna to talk to you first before I talk to anybody, you know, to get your opinion. But, um, you know, even when my life changed and I gave my life to the Lord, 
I didn't press Keith. I just tried to be an example to, to God, you know, how I was living my life. And every time, you know, every time that I got an opportunity, I throw my little testimony in there, you know, and I just pretty much would tell him, you know, Keith, you have to give your life to Jesus Christ at one time. If you want to see your parents again, there's only one place where, where they're at, which is in heaven. And if you need, if you want to see them again, you have to give your life to Christ. That's the only place where you get to see them. It didn't bother him too much about it, but I, I just, you know, and, you know, so, you know, we just went on and on, but I'm not going to belabor the point because I know the time is short, but, uh, you know, Keith was my best friend. You know, um, like I said, any time we, we'll talk about the basketball, but a lot of times he would call me about serious situations. And whatever that was, I was always there to help him. And so, you know, in this time, I'm going to miss him. You know, I love him. And I would say to the family and to Denise, God has you. You know, uh, when, you, when this is over, your comforter is always going to be there. And you look to him, you know, as the author and finisher of your faith. And just continue to hold on to his unchanging hand. Amen. God bless. Good afternoon, family and friends of Keith Darrell Jefferson. The family know him as Keith Darrell. He was the only cousin I re remember, and we had tons of cousins and super tons. He's the only one I knew was called by his first and his middle name. Mm -hmm. We all have first name, but he was always Keith Darrell. And sometimes when you talk with people. You never know when it's going to be the last time that you're going to talk with them. That's right. Less than 48 hours before the Lord called Keith home, I had the opportunity to be in his presence for an afternoon. And if you know Keith, you don't get to talk much. <laughs> you listen a lot. And he talks a lot. And he didn't just talk a lot, but he talked loud. <laughs> And so on that day, I kept saying, excuse me, can I, can I say something, please? And he'll say, go ahead, I'm not going to say anything else. I said, don't say that, we're in the church. You're going to say something else. Let's, let's agree to tag team. You tag me and I'll talk and I'll tag you back and you can talk. But when Denise called me on, on this past Monday and asked me to give words on behalf of the cousins, she said, Keith loved the sparring matches that you all always had. When I thought about that, I reflected. I thought about when I was with Keith on Monday, Keith gave me his eulogy and what he said to me in those couple of hours. So I want to share with you <coughs> memories that Keith left with me. And I'm doing it, taking each letter of his name, just Keith. The first letter is a K. Keith was kind. He had acts of kindness that he showed. One of the things he told me on Monday in his kindness is that he skipped the birthday celebration of his aunt because he wanted to show kindness to the Taylor family in creating the last floral arrangement that he made on this earth. And that was about three days before he took his last breath. And he was proud of that heart of flowers that he had made for the Taylor family. Mm -hmm. He said, cuz, did you see it? That's the one I made. I said, I saw it, cuz, and it really looks nice. I witnessed his last act of kindness to his Jefferson family when less than 48 hours before he took his last breath, he walked his 98-year-old aunt to my car and gently helped her to her seat all the time talking loud and nonstop. My aunt wears a hearing aid, but I know she heard every word he said. And he handled her with so much kindness. And that's the Keith I remember. Keith was kind. He was also the kind of person who never met a stranger. 
He talked to everybody. Last year, I took my grandsons to the International Fe Festival at the State Fairgrounds, and all the countries were represented, and I went by the one for St. Croix. And there was a young man there and a, and a, and a woman, and, she said, you have to, and he said, you have to come to St. Croix sometimes. I said, I've been to St. Croix. He said, oh, really? I said, yes, I have a first cousin that was there, and, and we visited with him while we was there. He's like, who's your cousin? I said, Keith Jefferson. You're talking about the flower man? I say yes, and so at that moment we called Keith on the phone, and he was at work and he couldn't answer his phone, but we took a picture together, and I sent it to him. Also, e, Keith was energetic. He was the ever-ready bunny. Right. Even on Monday, I said, Denise, does he talk in complete sentences in his, sentences in his sleep? Because some people do that. She says, when he lays down Debbie, he is out like a light. So... He was very energetic. While I visited him in St. Croix, he had me to go on the flower delivery with him, which I thought was gonna be a one delivery stop, but not with the ever energetic buddy, Keith. He had me to go and to deliver some flowers on a bank, and I did remind him, you never paid me for working for you. <laughs> but he went all over the island, showing me every little nook and cranny of St. Croix with all of his energy. He also shared to me on Monday that he loved his work at Lowe's. He said, cuz, I don't know what's happening to our young people. He said, but they go and hide in the break room when we're on break. But if somebody needs help on the floor, Mr. Keith will go and give up his break and go and help them. He said, sometimes I would even work through lunch if someone needs help because Keith had that kind of energy. And on the last time that we were with him, all of us Jeffersons who were there knows that Keith went around and took pictures of and with every family member who was in, present there. Yeah. None of us know, knew at that time, but that would be the last pictures that we would take with and of Keith. But that was him. So he was kind, he was energetic, but also he was insightful. He was insightful. He told me what his plans were for 2024. He says, I have two goals for 2024. One of them, cuz, is I'm going to join St. John Baptist Church. And a neutral lady told me he also said he wanted to sing in the choir. All right. But he says, I'm also going to restart my flower business. He said, I'm going to start it in my garage. Mm -hmm. And so he talked about all the details that he had worked out in his head about what he was gonna do for 2024. Also, he was insightful because when I got up to go get something, he noticed that I kinda of grunted a little bit. He said, you having trouble with your knee? And I said, yes I am. He says, I got the answer for you. I want you to go right now on your phone, go to Amazon, and order this stuff called Sombre, and he spelled it three or four times, and he, and the, and I ordered it, and I kind of forgot about it. On the day that he died, it arrived in the mail. And I tell you, I put that sombre on my knee, and I wrapped it in some plastic and went to bed, and I had been getting injections in this knee because it's been giving me a fit, and I want you to know I have not had that kind of pain in my knee since that day. So that was the insight that was left, and my husband's been using it on his back, and he's had severe back pain, and he's only had to use it twice. So I thank Keith for the insightfulness that he has. He also said to me, you know, I've been working hard a long time. And I decided to retire because I said, when am I going to stop and enjoy all that I've worked hard for? Right. So I thank God that he gave him some time with Denise before um, he left us. Yes. I know Denise didn't get much done every day because he talks loud and non-stop. <laughs> also, the T for Keith, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that God moved him back to Columbia some five years ago to give all of us the last five years of sweet memories with our Keith. Yes, yes. That makes this day more bearable for us. He had more time to spend with all of his Dreer family and all of his Jefferson family. And finally, for the H, 
He was a husband of husbands. Yes, yes. He loved his Denise. I had to hear the whole story about how he moved her from St. Croix to his mom's house on Mountain Brook. And he said, cuz, I had her in one room, but I took her from a house. So then we got an apartment. He said, it was good for me and Denise, but what if family came to visit? I took her from St. Croix in a house. He said, and I wasn't gonna rest till I got her a house because I took her from a house. And he said these words to me, and at the time it meant not much to me. But he says, I wanted my wife to have a place that's home for her. My, my. So if I go before she does, Lord Jesus. I can feel confident in knowing that she has a home. Now if she decides to leave that home, that's okay. But I know I've done my part as a husband in providing for her. So this is my reflections of my Keith. He was kind, energetic, insightful, thankful, and a husband. And I want to leave these words with us as a family. From Isaiah 22 and 2. On your hardest days, remember, Lord, Oh, have mercy. Mm -hmm. We wait on you. Yes, Lord. Be our strength yes. every, day. every day and our salvation in the time of trouble. Yes, yes. Rest on, Keith. We love you. Yes, Hello, we speaking on behalf of the nieces today, Uncle Keith's nieces, um, and I wrote a little something that I will be sharing today. Um, Keith Daryl Jefferson was something to everyone who entered his life, a big brother, an uncle, a friend, a cousin, a godfather, and a husband. But above all, he was a man who was loved, and a man who loved just as hard. I never saw my Uncle Keith without a smile, and although I never met him, I feel like he was the embodiment of the person my grandfather was. Um, my uncle found a million different ways to share his love with his family, and he did it loud and proud, too, because there wasn't anything quiet about Uncle Keith. He was a man who spoke his mind and uplifted those around him. His presence alone could light up a room and he felt emotion so deeply to the point it made him selfless. Someone who puts his own needs aside for the sake of others and dished out those stern talks when he needed to. He could put a smile on anyone's face and he loved to laugh and to share his laughter with those around him because if there was one thing our uncle could do, it was tell a good story. He'd, he'd point, I mean, he'd paint it in the most vivid ways as if you were right in the moment with him. He could take you back to 109th Street on Lexington and Harlem or his flower shop in St. Croix, right in the walls of Mountain Brook or the, ro the dirt roads of Tolliver Street. No matter where it was, he took you with him when he told stories. That's the kind of man my godfather was and always will be. An artist who could create the most detailed pieces with his words and his hands because can't nobody arrange flowers like our Uncle Keith. He left the Virgin Islands to be closer to his family, all of us gathered here today. 
He sought to bask in the beauty of togetherness and forge new memories right here in Columbia with Aunt Denise in their new home. He came to my graduation, which I will never forget. Um, and that journey was cut short too early, but it was his decision to return to us that allowed us to spend these final moments with him during his beautiful life. We need each other now more than ever, and as a family, we will rise through this hand in hand. While we mourn, we must not forget to celebrate the life he lived and the person Uncle Keith was, a big brother, an uncle, a friend, a cousin, a godfather, and a husband, Coletta and Herbert Sr.'s firstborn son. We will never forget you, Godfather. You will always be in our hearts, your stories, your love, and your flowers. That is all. Yes, I'm here to talk about my cousin, Keith. Um, this is going to be a New York story. Um, I'm going to be short-winded, but it's going to be a New York story. Um, and I'm going to start from the beginning. You got four sisters that embarked on New York. My mother, Aunt Coletta, Aunt Maddie, followed by Aunt Sarah and Dwayne. And embarking in New York, um, it seemed like every time Aunt Coletta had a child, my mother had a child. Um, <laughs> starting with Gail, followed by Theandra, Keith, Gut, Herbert, Calvin, Greg, Tyrone, myself, and Nitra, and followed by Talia. Um, coming up in New York City, Keith, living on the east side, um, he, he put his footprints in D. Wood Clinton. And him putting his footprints in D. Wood Clinton made it easier for Herbert, Calvin, Tyrone, and Nitra to be respected in D. Wood Clinton. He laid the foundation for the respect and for people to respect him. I felt safe, me, Greg, and Tony always felt safe when we came over to D. Wood Clinton because of the foundation that Keith set within that neighborhood. And in setting that foundation, well, let me tell a quick, because like I said, I'm gonna be short-winded. Let me tell a quick Sunday story. Keith used to come by and spend the night at our house um, on the west side. And anybody that know Inez and Frank, if you come to spend the night at their house over the weekend, you had to go to church. <laughs> So this particular, son, this particular weekend, they schemed up a, a plan to my brother Tony to hide his, sho his shoes so he wouldn't go to church. So he thought if he heard his shoes that um, my father would say they couldn't go to church. So the plan worked sort of where my brother hid his shoes. Um, when he hid his shoes, <laughs> my, he couldn't, Tony couldn't find his shoes, so my father because I, I was actually in the room, tell me the story wrong, I was actually in the room when they was planning it. But when my brother hit his shoes and told my father he couldn't find his shoes to go to work, my father said, okay, you can't find your shoes? Well, you won't be going outside until those shoes are found. Um, <laughs> so he said, Keith Darrell, I'm gonna keep it to Keith Darrell, Dean. He said, Keith Darrell, get, get dressed. He said, because Aunt Coletta, he said, Coletta and Herbert sent your suit over um, for you to go to church. And he looked at my brother told me, he was like, well, I was gonna stay here and hope and find his shoes. <laughs> and my father was like, uh-uh. He said, you gonna come to church with us. So mysteriously, miraculously, my brother found his shoes and we all went to church. <laughs> but um, yeah, Keith was everything to me. He hired me as a youth to work at the flower shop. Um, had his own business in Harlem as a, flower, as a florist, as well as St. Croix, Denise, 
and Keith invited me out to St. Croix for a weekend. I went out there and had a ball, Denise, thank you. I still remember the time. Um, and then in um, 96, my brother passed away. And um, when my brother passed away, I had a conversation with Keith. And Keith said, he, you know, he said to me, he said, well, I would never be able to take the place of God. But he said, I'm always going to be there for you um, as a big brother. And I just want you to know, Keith, you fulfilled that. Um, I appreciate you. I love you. I miss you. And you're going to forever and always be in my heart. I love you. Give an honor to God in the pulpit. A family is a group of people related by birth, marriage, adop adoption, or people who live together. Such persons are considered as members of one family. This is the definition of family. I need to add one other word, devoted to each other. The best word to describe Keith was devoted to his family and his friends. He never met a, and he never met a stranger. A memory I have of Keith back when he came here from New York and his buddy Tony Yarborough playing in the dirt on Carver Street. And Keith even ate some of that dirt. Another memory of Keith when he came here from New York is when I taught him how to drive. I had a 1968 Plymouth Fury and he wanted to learn how to drive and I said, well, come on, let's go. And I taught Keith how to drive. When he and his wife Deese, Denise moved here to Columbia from St. Croix, he was so happy. He was always inviting family and friends to his house. He continued to make new friends. Every time I saw Keith, he would tell me he met someone that knew me as a teacher or a coach, and he enjoyed doing that. Keith family and extended family is huge but he managed to include everyone. Another great moment was when Damon and I took our wives to St. Croix on a vacation, and he and Denise treated us real special. I think everyone on the island knew his two uncles was in, was in St. Croix. <laughs> At the house, I had a special chair, and if anyone sat in that chair, Chief would tell them, that is Uncle Hamp's chair. <laughs> Keith and Denise was always together. Mm -hmm. he, loved her, he loved his wife very much. Yes. He wanted to take her to the beach. He took her to the beach as often as possible because mm -hmm. he knew she had missed, he missed the beach in St. Croix. But we had Keith for 66 years, and God was ready to take him to come home to his heavenly home. And in our heart, he would always be with us. School boy, that's what we called him. I got it together today. But I think just in case, y'all gonna have to excuse me, I think it might be better if I don't look up. Okay. 
as we stand here in this wonderful house. Pastor Graham, all of the clergy that is assembled, family and friends, so beautiful and so wonderful to see you today. My brother Keith was not just a florist. My brother was the Picasso and the Rembrandt of flowers. So this is a special dedication to my big bro. Just give me a second. I would ask that you bear with me as I attempt to summon and call upon all of the mental acuities that I possess so that the words that I speak be both true and square All right. regarding my big brother, Keith Darrell, AKA KJ, AKA Schoolboy. And among the Jeffers six siblings, Keith and I were roommates growing up. And where he led, I followed. <laughs> he read Marvel comic books, so I did too. All right then. He read Eldridge Cleaver's Soul on Ice. All right. George Jackson's Soul of Dad Brother. So I did too. I wore his cardigan sweaters, tried to work my way to up his up to his alpaca sweaters, but he wasn't having that. So I had to wait him out. He lit a fire in me that made me seek my own path. So I read Bobby Seals, Seize the Time, the autobiography of Malcolm X, and discovered Dr. John Henry Clark and Mother Africa. All of that was done by the age of 16. And I've been looking towards Africa ever since. So when you see me, when you see me, what you are witnessing is the emulation of him. My siblings and I, grew up in a household with our parents from humble beginnings and Spanish heart. But we were nurtured with a Southern value system that emerged from both Carver Street and Tolliver Street in the form of our parents, Herbert Sr. and Coletta. And let me make this perfectly clear right here because I am oftentimes mentioned as the eldest brother and now the patriarch of our siblings. Well, that's when we're talking about the progeny of Herbert Sr. and Coletta. But my father, Herbert Sr., had two other sons, my big brother Derek and my big brother Michael. This is not on paper right now. And Derek and I were talking yesterday, and he was talking about Keith. And he said that Keith loved flowers so much that flowers loved him back. <laughs> he loved flowers so much that flowers loved him back. Amen. Our parents, they raised us to stick together. We have done that and will continue to do so. For in doing so, we honor them and now our brother Keith too. So Denise, we are family for life. We're gonna always be together. Amen. We will always have each other. Amen. And I'd just simply like to close with this. 
It's a poem that I wrote, a short one, a few years ago. Never thought that under these circumstances I'd be reciting it. But I think it's appropriate for the moment that we find ourselves in at present. And it's entitled, For My Brothers Who Are Here. I am my brother's keeper. For my brothers, they keep me. Encoded in our DNA, how we were shaped and formed to be. Yes, I am my brother's keeper and a keeper of the flame. An emotional type of brother. And in that I find no shame. I am my brother's keeper, striving to be true. Mistakes along the way, indeed, I've made a few. Yes, I am my brother's keeper. After all, we need each other. I can think of nothing better than to be a keeper of my brothers. Rest well, schoolboy. We love you into eternity. Start by leaving just a little simple message for you today. For those of you who don't know him for the pardon of your sins, we just want to tell you a little something about the name Jesus. Yeah. 
Christ, we thank you because I'm saved, yes, sanctified yes, at the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and my mind to keep yes, pressing sir, yes, sir. a couple of times like these. We certainly thank God for the life, thank you, Lord. Work, thank you. legacy of Keith Darrell. Oh, yes, sir. Amen. Jefferson, we praise God for his life. Amen. He was always an encourager. Yes. Every time he would come to church, he would come at the end of the service encouraging the preacher. Yes, sir. Amen. And we praise God. For him. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is a word from the Lord coming from Revelation chapter 22, oh, come on, preacher. verses 10 through 12. We want to read in your hearing Revelation 22, verses 10 through 12. We certainly give, uh, want to say to the wife, the niece, and uh, the siblings, the family, we praise God for you. And we are praying for you. And we Amen. pray that God will continue to strengthen and comfort you. Amen. Revelation 22, 10 through 12. And he said to me, Do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Yes, he who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. Yes, he who is righteous, let him be righteous still. Yes. He who is holy, let him be holy Come still. On, and behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me yes, to give to every man, everyone, yes, sir. Yes, according sir. to his work. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I want to use for a theme or a thought these brief moments we have together the ready factor. All right. The ready factor. All right. Subtopic ready or not, here I come. <laughs> ready or not, here I come. Saints. 
We live in crucial times. Yes, sir. Times where many have fallen away from the church. Times where men neither fear God nor regard man. Times where drugs are taking over our world. Times where COVID and cancer are plaguing our land. Mm -hmm. Times where sons are against fathers and daughters are against mothers. Yes, we live in perilous times. Yes, times where robbing and killing and destroying lives are the rules of the day. We live in troubled times. We live in the end times. Therefore, there is an urgency to get right with God. Right. It is urgent for us to seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. The ready factor. Here we are in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, the last chapter of the Bible. This is the final act on the stage of life. However, even in the midst of this final stage of life, there is an urgency to get right with God. Amen. Even while the curtain is closing, God has not given up on man. He is urging us to get ready to meet the Lord. He is still warning and pleading and calling and, and urging us to come to him, saying, ready or not, here I come. Right. We see this urgency in the very words of Jesus in verses uh, 7 and 12 of, of Revelation 22. Jesus is speaking, saying, and behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Then verse 12 says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. Amen. The ready factor. In so many words, he is saying, Ready or not, here I come. Amen. The death of our dear brother Keith Jefferson is another warning up to us yes. so that we can what? Get right with God. That's In other right. words, uh, Jesus and death is saying, Ready or not, here I come. And it is Brother Keith day to day, but it could be hours tomorrow, Say or the it, next hour, it. or even the next minute. Say it, preacher. This is what the angel is telling John. Time is nigh. There is no time to waste. We must act now. However, when John heard the voice of Jesus, he saw the things that the angel showed him. He started bowing down to worship the angel. But the angel said, don't worship me. I'm just a servant. I'm on assignment. No, no, I'm, don't worship me. I'm here to serve you. Don't worship me. Worship God. Love God. Serve God. Amen. He is above all creation. He is above all the angels. Worship God. We're here to worship God. What is it in your life? Who is it in your life? What ideas, what goals, what possessions are there in your life that's keeping you from worshiping God? Then he goes on to tell John, don't close the book, don't seal it up, don't put it away, but the message is urgent, the message is important, the message is needed, the message needs to be heard. Yes, sir. Folk needs to know what thus saith the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't seal the book, for the time is at hand, the time is right, the time is now. We don't have time to waste. Come on, preacher. It is urgent, it is expedient, it is imperative. There is no time to procrastinate or pick flowers along the way. There is no time to weigh the matter or to form a, a committee. There is no time to vote on the matter. Yes, we sir. must act now, decide now, choose now to follow Jesus. The time is at hand. Ready or not, here I come. Amen. When death or Jesus or judgment comes, Amen. we won't have time to get right. The time to get right is now. The time to repent is now. The time to deal justly. The time to live holy is now. We must act now. Give our life now. Make our life count now. Ready factor. Yes, sir. Death of dear Keith Jefferson is a clear indication that we don't have time to waste. No, no. That it is. It pays to get ready and be ready. Though he was 66 years old, his death reminds us of our time will come and uh, will we be ready? Yeah. Amen. Jesus said, no man knows the minute or the hour when the Son of Man appears. You can be riding on an airplane and if the Lord says you got to go, you have to go. Amen. 
You can be walking down the street and he calls your name, you got to go. Or you can be at home lying in your bed and guess what? If, the, if that comes creeping in your room, you got to go. And thank God, Brother Keith was ready. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Are you ready? Are you saved? Are you sanctified? Are you filled with the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. Why? Because death can come up, come up on you so fast that you won't have time to think or act or change or get ready. Come on, preach. This is what the angel was telling John in our text in verse 11. He says, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. He goes on to say, and behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to pay every man according as his work shall be. Ready or not, here I come. Jesus says, when I come, those whom I find working, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, will be blessed. He says it like this, blessed are they that do his commandment, that they may have a right to the tree of life, that they may enter into the gates of the city. Don't you want to walk in that city so bright and fair, so bright and clear? Why? Because John said in Revelation 22 verse 3, he said that in that city there shall be no more curse. I don't know about you, but I thank God for the shells of the Bible. Yes, sir. Anytime I see shell in the Bible, you can bank on it. I can bank on it. Yes, sir. For what? It is the promises of God. Come on, preacher. We, we don't have to hold our heads down, family. No, no. We can hold, our, hold on to the promises of God. Yes, sir. For from Genesis to Revelation, we see the great shells and will of God. Yes, there in that first Great farewell in Genesis. We hear, we hear the words of the, of, of, the, of the Genesis saying, and the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes. Then shall the gathering of the people be, and the wolf shall lie down with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the goat, and the lion shall eat straw like an ox. And they shall not fight or kill at all my holy hill. And every valley shall be exalted. And every mountain shall be brought low. And every crooked place shall be made straight. And the rough places shall be made smooth. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Look at the promises of God. You can bank on these promises. And they shall they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Yes, Hallelujah. When we run to the New Testament, we see that line that says, and you shall see the Son of Man coming in power. And as the revelation closes, we hear it there in, in, in Revelation 22, and there shall be no more curse. And they shall see his faith, and his name shall be on their foreheads, and they shall worship him, and they shall reign forever and ever. Family, yes, the night may get dark, but the morning is sure to come. Why? Because he promised weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Aren't you glad? That when Jesus said, behold, I come quickly, Brother Keith was ready. When Jesus said, ready or not, here I come, Brother Keith was ready. In fact, what made him ready was Jesus came alongside him and cheered him on to victory. Yes. About like Daddy Jefferson used to do Brother, Brother Keith on his football, doing his football game. They tell me that Keith was a <laughs> running back for Gunnery High School. And when he would get the ball, he would see his daddy on the sidelines. Mr. Jefferson running alongside him, cheering him on to the end zone. Yes, and that gave Brother Keith a determination to run on to the touchdown. Well, on Tuesday, Brother Keith's number was called by Jesus, the captain of his soul. And he was ready to take the ball of life into the end zone of eternity. Why? Because he saw Jesus, the captain of his soul, running alongside him, saying, run, run, run. 
And oh, in his determination, he made it home. He ran saying, I'm ready now to be offered up. And my time of my departure is at hand. I've fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. And now there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. With the Lord, the righteous judge shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but all those who love his appearing, ready or not, here I come. Family, friends, if the Lord was to call you home today, will you be ready? I've done my work. I've sung my song. I've done some good. I've done some wrong. And I shall go where I belong. The Lord has willed it so. He knows my heart and every thought. He knows what pain and joy I brought. And by his love I shall be taught the way to him I know. He knows my soul so weak and blind, so full of fears of mortal mind. And he shall lead and I shall find the way to him I know. He guides my step. He knows best. He will not harm where he is blessed. And so good night, I'll take my rest. Where the sweet wild roses grow. Where the sweet wild roses grow. The ready factor. God bless. Davies from the home and step.
Let us all stand except for the family. All stand except for the family. Let's praise God for this choir. I mean, this awesome. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Wonderful. All of his first cousins. Thank you, cousin. All of his first cousins. And friends. Well, he's deep, you're very soft. And for real, you're going to love him. Don't know about him. It's a good God.
Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,